new. Today, six first responders charged with failure to intervene in the death of a young man who called 911 are due in court. A Clear Creek deputy shot and killed Christian Glass in June of 2022 after he called for help. The other six officers on the scene were charged with failing to intervene, which is a misdemeanor. Testimony picks back up today in the trial of the paramedics charged in Elijah McLean's death, and prosecutors could rest their case by tomorrow. Paramedics Peter Kachuniak and Jeremy Cooper face charges of reckless manslaughter and multiple counts of assault. Aurora police detained Anthony McLean to the ground in 2019 after a report that he seemed sketchy. He wasn't armed and he wasn't breaking the law. Paramedics then injected him with an overdose of the sedative ketamine, which prosecutors allege he never needed in the first place. Yesterday, they asked an EMT who was there that night about how the paramedics responded. Did you ever see the patient become combative? No. Did you see him making any movements? No. Did you see Mr. Cooper or Mr. Chikuniak um, checking the patient at all during this period of time? I don't remember. Were they getting any kind of vital signs? No. How about checking for blood pressure? No. The jury also heard about the training that the paramedics received, including appropriate ketamine dosing for weight. McLean weighed 140 pounds and should have gotten about 320 milligrams of ketamine. Instead, he got 500 milligrams. The defense could start their case tomorrow, which would be ahead of schedule. This week, the man accused of driving impaired and crashing into four first responders is scheduled to be in court. This crash happened last week. Commerce City officers and South Adams firefighters were on the scene of a separate DUI crash at 76 near Sable. Police say Benjamin Winters drove around a barricade and hit two firefighters and two police officers. One of the firefighters was seriously hurt and needed surgery. The other first responders were not badly hurt. It's still not clear what charges Winters will face. He's set to be in court tomorrow. Today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will meet with President Biden at the White House. He's expected to ask for more military aid, but Republicans in Congress are not on board. In the Senate, top Republicans are pushing to tie additional aid to immigration policy changes. Biden says he might be willing to compromise. Lawmakers say it's unlikely they will come to an agreement before they recess for the holidays. While lawmakers try to work out that funding, House Republicans could vote to approve an impeachment inquiry into President Biden as soon as tomorrow. It centers around allegations that President Biden financially benefited from his family's overseas business deals. So far, there has been no evidence against him. Almost every House Republican would have to vote in favor of the inquiry for it to pass. Colorado Representative Ken Buck says he believes he's the only Republican planning to vote against it. The president's son, Hunter Biden, is trying to get his federal gun charges tossed out. Biden is arguing that the charges should be dismissed because of an agreement with prosecutors. In July, he agreed to a plea deal to plead guilty to two tax charges and have a felony gun charge dismissed. Prosecutors withdrew that deal, but Biden's attorney says the agreement on dismissing the gun charge was already in effect. An update out of Texas this morning. A mother has decided to leave her home state to get an emergency abortion. Her doctors say she urgently needs it after the Texas Supreme Court ruled against her last night. Kate Cox, a mother of two now 20 weeks pregnant, discovered two weeks ago the baby she's currently carrying has a fatal genetic condition and will not survive. Now her attorneys say in a new letter, due to the ongoing deterioration of Miss Cox's health condition, Miss Cox is now forced to seek medical care outside of Texas. Doctors say her life, health, and fertility are at serious risk. The idea that Miss Cox wants desperately to be a parent and this law might actually cause her to lose that ability is uh, shocking and um, would be a, a genuine miscarriage of justice. Last week, a state court judge ordered Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton to not enforce its six-week abortion ban against Cox or her doctors. That decision was quickly put on hold late Friday. The AG's office argued she does not meet the criteria for a medical exception.
It is now 606 on your Tuesday morning and today the United Nations General Assembly will vote on an immediate humanitarian pause in the war between Israel and Hamas. The UN was the only country to vet, uh, veto a humanitarian ceasefire during a similar vote last week. The difference today is that this vote is not legally binding but it does put pressure on Israel and Hamas. People all around the world have been calling for a ceasefire for months now. This round of fighting started on October 7th when Hamas attacked Israel. Since then almost 18,000 Palestinians have been killed and 90% of Gaza's population has been displaced. Aid agencies now say that half the population faces starvation. And one thing to know about your weather, we are staying cloudy and dry today, but tomorrow we do have a system moving up from the south to bring us about a 40% chance of snow for the metro area. We're going to be about 40 degrees for a high today, 38 for a high tomorrow.